Hello! Hi! I'm here to wrap up the books that I finished before Diversathon started. So this is book 6 through 11, I think. So the first one is The Apothecary by Miley Malloy. This is a young adult historical fiction book about this girl who lived in Los Angeles with her parents who are filmmakers and this is during the Cold War and they're kind of on the communist watch list so they want to get out of the country they move to England she meets this boy who's the son of the apothecary and they basically go on this adventure together they find out that the apothecary can basically do like magic with his herbs and stuff. I really liked this book. It was really fun to read. One thing that I really liked about it was that the characters were 14 years old so they were at an age where they were definitely old enough to do things independently but they were also very young and just their attitudes about things were so silly and they would view really serious things with such an immature worldview, not in a bad way, just in a really adorable, funny way that I thought worked really well. I liked all the banter and crazy adventures that these characters were going on together, and I had a lot of fun with it. I was kind of torn between giving this three and a half or four stars. I really did enjoy it, but I gave it three and a half in the end just because I didn't feel like it stuck with me in a really emotional sense, and it was set up so like the so Soviet Union was basically this amalgamous bad guy and there were all these really stereotypical Russian evil dudes. <laughs> I wish that had been different. But overall I definitely liked this. I think that I will keep going with this series at some point. Next I read this graphic novel called Put the Book Back on the Shelf. This is an anthology by a ton of different authors and it's inspired by the band Belle and Sebastian. So every single short story in here is based on a different song by the band Bell and Sebastian. I thought this was a really interesting concept. I did really like the way that some of the authors interpreted the songs and it was definitely a unique reading experience because I actually like sat down, I would listen to the song first or I would kind of listen to it as I read the story and I could see how the author drew inspiration from it and it was just kind of, I don't know, an interactive reading experience that I liked. I also really liked that I was introduced to so many different independent comic book artists that I've never heard of before, but on the whole, I don't know if I could really say that I loved this. The majority of these stories I would say I disliked. Just on their own, I didn't think they were very good. Some of them were okay. A lot of them actually just took the actual lyrics from the Belle and Sebastian song and kind of illustrated them, and those were probably my favorite. Piazza New York, catch your eye, you straight at our UK. We hung about the stadium, we got no place to stay. We hung about the tenderloin and tenderloin. Tell about the saddest book you ever read It always makes you cry They were more fun for me and honestly I thought that Belle and Sebastian were better at writing, you know, the, their lyrics were better than most of the things that these artists were coming up with on their own. I also found like five or six typos in this and that just bothered me. On the whole, I would say this is interesting. And I would totally check out more uh, books that had the same concept as this with a different artist, maybe. And I'm glad I read it. It was definitely interesting. But uh, would I recommend it? Like, I can't say that it was particularly good. I gave it like two and a half out of five stars. Next, I read Champion by Marie Lu. And so now I have finished off the Legend trilogy. This is the third and final installment in this YA dystopian series. Overall, I did like this series, but this final one was a little bit of a disappointment to me. I'm not gonna go super into the details, but I'm just gonna say that Overall, this series was entertaining and fast-paced. It kept me going throughout the whole thing. I didn't think it was the most amazing thing ever. It was a pretty standard series, but like I enjoyed reading it for sure. On the whole, it was good. There were two things that kind of stuck out to me that I did not like. They were the ending of the third book. I absolutely hated. I can't say what it is, obviously. And then there was like increasingly 
bad gay representation in this series. The first one didn't have any. The second one had a little bit kind of but it wasn't good and then this third one took it even farther and it was just not positive at all i really didn't like the way that that was done overall i gave this like three stars and i gave the first two like three and a half stars next i read la rose by louise erdrich this is a book that takes place in the late 90s and early 2000s right at the turn of the century and it follows two families the husbands are best friends, the wives are half-sisters, although they are not very close. They both have five-year-old sons and one day one of the husbands is trying to shoot a deer and he accidentally kills the son of the other family. Everything takes off from there. It's not a very plot-driven book, it just follows the different members of this family and it, it will even go back in time and follow the ancestors of this family and it was it was weirdly structured it just I felt like it was kind of all over the place but I really did like this all the characters are Native American it was just really nice and interesting for me to see regular day-to-day -day tribal life I just feel like I don't get a lot of modern day representation of native people it's always like back to colonial times and people want to write books about the fur trade and stuff which is fine but it's not like native people just disappeared the characters were really fascinating not always the greatest people but some of them I ended up caring about so much and even though the book deals with difficult topics. The times I actually felt most emotional were very minor parts of the book, but just when something really positive happened in some of the characters' lives, I felt so immensely happy for them because I felt like they'd gone through so much. I was more affected by the positive moments than the negative moments. I really enjoyed this. It was my first Louise Erdrich book and I'm already planning on reading more of her stuff. I would recommend this book really highly for people who liked Everything I Never Told You by Celeste Ng. I just think that it is similar in content as well as style. I gave La Rose four out of five stars. Yeah, I quite liked that book. Then I read Where Am I Now by Mara Wilson, and this is the memoir of Mara Wilson, who was famous for playing a lot of roles in her childhood. She's in Mrs. Doubtfire and Matilda. I was really excited about this book and it did not let me down. I would say that one of the big differences between this book and other celebrity memoirs is that most celebrity memoirs are like written by actors who decided to start writing something whereas Mara Wilson used to be an actor and she is now a writer. And you can tell she's not just writing a book for the first time and like she doesn't know what she's doing. I thought that the writing was super, super good. There were just so many poignant lines. Everything about it was really well crafted. I was actually expecting it to be a lot funnier than it was. It was funny, but it made me really emotional when she talked about Matilda, uh, my heart, I couldn't handle it. It was so sweet. There was a chapter about Robin Williams that was obviously so sad to hear. She talked really openly about having OCD and I appreciated that so much. I liked her so much as a person. I liked pretty much every story. I would say that there were a few chapters that I didn't like as much as others but on the whole this was just so good. I can super super recommend this. I loved it so much. I gave this four and a half out of five stars. And then the last book was The Red Pencil by Andrea Davis Pinkney and this is a children's middle grade book written in verse and it has lots of doodles throughout it and I, I did listen to this on audio but I also followed along with an ebook version so I could see that the way things were structured and I could see all the pictures and that worked really well for me. So this follows a girl in Sudan. She lives in like a small village with her family. The Darfur conflict is basically throwing their lives into turmoil. There was definitely a section of this book in the middle where I was so emotionally affected by it. I was just like, 
ugly sobbing. It was really, really hard to read. It was upsetting, but I was, you know, so appreciative that this book exists. A children's book about refugees, it's really honest about some of the things that they had to go through. It's just really great. At points, I was less interested in the narrative and there were definitely sections at the beginning and the end that I wasn't paying as much attention to. In the end, I gave this like three and a half stars. There were aspects of it that I really liked, but there were also things I just like, I wished were different and I wanted more from. And I think that's it. Those are all the books that I've read since my last wrap up up until Diversathon, which is going on currently. And I will tell you all about that when it is over. Yep. Goodbye.